Let's talk about the Omer. Let's talk about the Omer. What is the Omer? What is the Omer? That is the question we need to figure out today. What is it? Okay, great. Exactly what, what I wanted to hear, which is the wrong answer. Thank you so much. Oh, I love it. The Omer is not a time period. The word Omer means something. It actually is referring to an object. That's with an Aleph. This is with an Ayin. With an Ayin. Right? The Omer. What was the Omer? I'm going to help you. It's an object. Actually, the Omer is not even an object. It's referring to an object. The word Omer actually is something quite specific. It's a measurement. A measurement. What kind of measurement is it? The amount of food that a human needs to eat in one day. That's why when the man came, if I'm not mistaken, it came down Omer Gul It was one portion for each person for one day of eating. So the word Omer actually is a measurement. Here, it's referring to a measurement of an actual food. What was that food and what was done with it? No, not the man. Matzah? Hmm? Matza. Not the matzah. Oh, this is good. You didn't have food. Woof! Wow. I'm talking what about I'm talking about a certain offering. A certain offering Korban. that was brought not the Korban Pesach. Well, at this point with the Mishkan, later on it's going to be to the Beit HaMikdash, but what was it? This is very important. It has, it could be flowers. It was like arranged in different things. It was one thing. It was one thing. Of a land. It was one thing that what? Money? There was an Omer, which is an amount, of a certain item that was brought the day after, of a food, that was brought the day after, at, thank you so much. That was about the day after Pesach. When I say day after Pesach, I mean after the oh. Pesach Seder, which is why we're going to count. We're going to count from the second day of oh, Pesach, which for us is the second Seder night in Eretz Yisrael, is the first day of Cholamoid. No. no, 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 no. You need to know this. Not bread. It's matzah. It can't be bread, and it's not matzah. Okay, it's actually... But what do you say? Oh! Baruch Hashem, you got it. Bali. It's barley. It's barley. Why was barley brought as an offering? We are going to see. But that's what the word Omer is referring to. There was a portion of barley that was brought. Second day of Pesach. The grain itself. It's not chametz. No liquid was added to it. Just thing itself was brought. It was kosher Pesach, obviously. And... It was brought. We gotta see why. Let's have a look on page eighty-nine at the Pasuk themselves. Lior is talking. Yeah, Lior. Lior, that is a brilliant question. She's saying, is there a connection between the barley stalks that were seen in the dreams you're talking about, right? Over here as well. You know, I don't know the answer. That's a great question. I don't know the answer. It's going to have to be yes. When I explain to you why barley out of all the grains were brought and not wheat, maybe you'll find the answer. Maybe there is a Kesha Shebenehem that ties those two together. Okay, let me tell you why barley was brought and then we're going to f- try to figure it out. Okay. God spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu saying, Daber, <clears throat> Oh, but as I speak to the Jewish people, Ramatalem say to them, Kitavol Aretz, when you come to the land of Israel, I share on Nino Ten Lachem that I bring to you, Uktzartem. So this actual mitzvah of bringing the Omer started actually, I think I was mistaken, when we went into Israel. This is a mitzvah given in the Midbar that only began when we were in Eretz Yisrael. Yeah, it didn't happen in the Midbar, it started in Eretz Yisrael. On the second day of Pesach. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Uktsartem et ketzira. Because you are going to reap your wonderful fruits 
and you wonderful vegetables of the land of Israel. In the Midbar, we didn't have to sow anything because we had the man. You're absolutely right. But we get to Eretz Yisrael, we're going to transition from a man people to a fruit and vegetable people. So Moshe Rabbein is saying, listen, I'm not going to be in Eretz Yisrael with you. At this point, actually, you probably thought he would be. But I'm not going to be there with you. So we're going to go together to Eretz Yisrael. We're going to plant, we're going to sow, and we're going to cultivate, and the rain's going to come, and we're going to start to... So I'll tell you what we're going to do. As soon as you start to cut these wonderful grains and fruits and vegetables, ve'vetem, you're going to bring et omer, an amount. Omer means an amount. Reshit. What's reshit? Not reshit, the yeshiva that your future husbands are at. No, not, not reshit. Not reshit. No, no, no. Reshit means the beginning of ketzirachem el You're going to bring to the kohen. Where's the kohen? Where's the Kohen? Peter Minish. Well, who does the Kohen represent? Hashem. Kohen represents Hashem. So you're actually bringing the first reapings. What does reaping mean? The first fruit that you, and, and vegetables, and in this case, grains, that you're going to cut. You're going to take a piece, an omer, it's worth, and you're going to bring it as a gift to the Kohen. Who, and the Kohen, if you remember, is the shaliach of Hashem. So you're basically bringing a, a gift to Hashem, but who's going to get to eat it? Oh. The Kohen. Wait, That's how we support it. it? We're going to get there in a second, right? Vehenif et omer. You're going to wave this omer. It was waved in all directions. Lifnei Hashem, in front of God. Where is in front of God? What does that mean? The Beit HaMinish, that's a different Hanifa for different reasons, but it's also Hanifa, it's also waving around. Here, it's waving around. Lirt Sonachem, Mimacharat. Here it is. Now this is going to be very important. Mi ma charat ha shabbat. What is mi ma charat? Machar. What does machar mean? Tomorrow. Tomorrow or the day after. The day after ha shabbat. That's when you're going to do it. When is the day after shabbat? It can't be. It can't be. No, 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 no. It can't be because it's not telling me which Shabbat. Here we see a massive departure between the Torah Jews, the Rabbanim and the Gemara, who tell us through the Gemara that this Shabbat that is being referred to over here, when you bring this Omer, and it's actually going to be in the counting of the Omer as well, which is another mitzvah we'll talk about, which coincides with this, so we're going to get there, but this Shabbat is actually a reference to the holiday of Pesach. Because each holiday is also called Shabbat. So those people who do not follow the Gemara and the words of the rabbis started the Omer at a different time. Which makes no sense because their Shavuot must appear 49 days after leaving Egypt. Are you following me? So if you don't tell me that the day after Shabbat is actually the day after Pesach. When I say day after Pesach, I mean the Pesach night, the Seder. Then you're going to begin it at some other random time, because Shabbat obviously falls differently every year when it comes to Pesach. Are you with me? And after Shabbat will lead to a completely different date of Shavuot. Because we only know the date of Shavuot by counting 49 days and then an extra day to get to that point. Very good. The day of it exactly is what the rabbis tell us this Pasuk we just read means is the day after the Seder night. Which is why, to this day, we start counting the Omer. Now, what that count is about, is, we'll talk about another time, but it's going to be part of this mitzvah. We start counting it, Pesach, Seder, 2 in Chutz La'aretz, Chol HaMoed, 1 in Eretz Yisrael. Do we all understand what I'm talking about? One second, don't come with another question. I want you to understand what I just said. I'm going to repeat it. You have Pesach Seder. We know we do that. 50th of the Nisan. Right? That's when we do the Pesach. Everyone does it that night. The Apostle says, by the way, the day after, you start bringing this Omer. From that point on, from that point on, you can start to bring this Omer. That's the beginning point. Why not on Pesach Seder itself? Or the first day? Because you're busy with too many mitzvot to start dealing with barley offerings. So Hashem says, no problem. 
We don't want to mix up Simcha with Simcha, Mitzvah Mitzvah. One day is Pesach Seder, and the day after, you, what do you know the day after? It says, Marachat Mimacharat Shabbat, the day after Shabbat. This Shabbat is not Shabbat as you know it, the seventh day of the week, is referring to the day after Pesach. The day after Pesach, which is night, well, beginning night two, but day two of Pesach is when we would bring this Omer. That is when. Are we all clear? Do we all understand? Marvelous. Maya. Seven days in Eretz Yisrael. But that's what I'm referring to after the Seder, after the Seder night. How, how do they know that it's referring to right after the Seder day? They tell us because that Shabbat must be a reference to Pesach because it's not telling us which Shabbat. There's 52 Shabbats in the year. So the rabbis learn out this Machrat Shabbat, Rashi mentions it, that it's actually a reference to Pesach Seder night. And that's going to do it. And the Kohen is going to wave this as an offering. Why? We don't even know yet, but I'll get to that. Yeah. Right. No, at the second Seder. And you're going to stand up at the big Seder after nightfall, which is when you begin the Seder, and you're going to make the first bracha of the Emma. What? Sheni. In Eretz Yisrael, that's Kolamoed already. And then that's Maharat HaShabbat. Okay, we're going to get there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I love that. Right now, there's, right now, there's no counting. By the way, this is important. When I say Omer to you, just the word Omer, now you know what it is. It's an, but we also know it's a period of time, okay, between Pesach and Shavuot. Is that a happy time or a sad time? And just but imagine, imagine you, forget, forget it. Imagine you just walked into my class and I said to you, Omer, happy time, sad time. What would you say? Sad time or a mixture. Let me be very clear with you. The Omer is an extremely happy time. You're bringing a korban. We're going to see a thanks to Hashem. You're building every day, getting closer to Har Sinai, to Matan Torah. This was the happiest time. About a thousand years after leaving Egypt, something very bad happened during a period of those 49 days which cast a shadow, and I'm using that metaphor exactly, over a part of that time. But I want you to watch carefully. When you cast a shadow on something, when you remove the shadow, the happy time is still there. So the upsetting event, which we're going to talk about, that happened during this period, and it happened during this period for a reason, it's not a coincidence, just cast a shadow. But when you remove the bad time, the good it didn't push away the goodness. It didn't push it away. It's still there. It's just something very bad happened to a lot of Jewish people at that time, in the days of Rabbi Akiva, to his students, which made like a, a, a coating over this time that was very, very sad. But in essence, these days, this 49-day period between Pesach and Shavuot are extremely happy times. Happy for what reasons? A number of reasons. One of them you're building up, as we're going to see, to Shavuot, the giving of Matan Torah. We're preparing ourselves for Matan Torah, but also what's happening agriculturally. All of the fruits and vegetables are now going free out of the ground. So it's a time of wealth and prosperity because I'm able to bring out the first gleanings of all the stuff that I sowed many months before and during the winter season that you've pretty much come out of at this time of year, of Pesach, is now leaving us. And now we're leaving this harsh, cold land and getting beautiful fruits and vegetables in Eretz Yisrael. So it's a great time of joy. So Pesach and its time is a great time of joy. Omer is a really, really happy time. And that's where it was for a thousand or plus years. A really, really happy time for the Jewish people. And you're going to show your gratitude by taking some of this beautiful, delicious food coming out of the land of Eretz Yisrael, and you're going to bring it to Yerushalayim, to the Kohen, and it was brought as a korban over there. Why Bali? Why Bali is going to be the question over here. What is it about Bali that it is brought? We're going to see two reasons why Bali, right? Why Sora? Why was Bali chosen as the food that was brought from all the other crops that are coming out of the ground 
the day after Pesach and onwards. Why was barley chosen? There's two reasons why barley was chosen. Number one is because barley ripens the fastest. So it says reshit ketzirachim, the first thing that comes out, and barley is the first to come out before wheat, supposedly. And so barley was chosen because it's a very early producing crop. It's an early producing crop, and we want to show our gratitude to Hashem that we've reached this time of year, and the beautiful fruits and vegetables and grains coming out of the ground, and so barley was chosen for that reason. But barley represents something else. Because it's the first to come out. It's one of the earliest grains. And so the tradition was, we're going to use, or are we going to use this barley grain that comes out quickly? Because you want to say thank you quickly to Hashem, the lovely grain that's coming out. Wheat takes more time. But there's another reason. Is barley better or worse than wheat? From what you know, is barley better or worse than wheat? You can make more with wheat. What do we usually feed our families with, our friends with? Well, in my house, made of wheat. Or in my house, it's spelt, right, which is also an ancient grain. Right? We gave up on wheat for Chala Shabbat, but that's another question why. We'll leave wheat and gluten aside. But spelt. But actually, actually, barley can also be used. Barley bread and barley itself is considered a lower quality grain. And it's usually used to feed animals. Usually, food to feed animals. Now, we're going to see. We're going we're gonna to make an arc right now, an A-R-C, not an A-R-K. We're going to go from Pesach, and we're going to jump to Shavuot. Okay, we have an arc over here, and this is a 49-day period. Okay, we're going from, from Pesach, one second, from Pesach, we're going to count 49 days to get us into Shavuot. The food that's going to represent the early part of this journey is barley. And it's a lower quality food grain. It's barley that is food that is given to animals. We're going to see when we get there that on Shavuot, they also used to bring breads made out of chita, wheat, which is a higher form of grain and bread. So we're going not just from Pesach to Shavuot, we're going from barley to wheat. Are you following? Pesach, day after Pesach, second day of Pesach is barley, which is low quality grain, to wheat, chita, which is higher quality. This food represents the transition from, by the Jewish people from being low quality, barley, to being like animals. When we left Mitzrayim, we were like animals, right? We hadn't received the Torah yet. We were still animalistic in our behaviors and our thoughts after being stuck in Mitzrayim for so long. By the time you get to Shavuot, you're now eating wheat. You've now matured into a human and wheat is a higher grain and represents the, the maturation of the Jewish people. So we're transitioning from Pesach, second day of Pesach, that is second day, right? Of Pesach, which is barley, right through to the Stalech and the two breads we'll see that were brought in the Beit HaMikdash that were made of wheat, okay? So that, those foods represent this transition. So we go matzah, Pesach, Bali, second day, right? Because we're now getting ready for Shavuot, right through to Har Sinai, which is wheat. Yeah, Mian, we'll come to you. So very, very good. There, okay, that's after this event. After uh, Har Sinai, the Chet Egel happened. We made a mistake. We were humans. That's why we were punished so badly. Because we now should have known better after Har Sinai, but we still got involved in the Cheta Egel. So that's after, that's not part of this period. The Cheta Egel is not part of this 49-day period. This is a very joyous growth period of anticipation and excitement 
to reach Har Sinai and Matan Torah. So if Kaisa Aiko would have happened before, you think they got it would have done If, could, uh, would, uh, should, uh, as they say, as my Rebbe Yeshiva, Ashkenazi Yeshiva say, Ech You know what that means? I don't know. Who knows? Let's say Adam and Chava wouldn't have eaten from the, uh, from the uh, fruit. Oh, by the way, what did Adam and Chava, since we're mentioning it, eat in Gan Eden? What was that forbidden fruit? The Torah does not tell us. One opinion was, it, no one says apple, by the way. No one does say apple. It was most likely a fig, which, by the way, very interesting is how Michelangelo depicts it on the Sistine Chapel, which I visited, is, which is very cool. It only tells us that in the Gemara, which means that Michelangelo actually learned with a rabbi, because otherwise, how do you have known that fig? No one in the Torah doesn't say fig. It's in the Bible. Nope. Like in the Christian Bible? No, but the Christian Bible is the Torah. <laughs> no, I know, but they, you know how they have the New Testament? It doesn't the mention Testament it at all. all no, Testament. no. In the, forget this. There's, no, there's a New Testament. There's no old. It's not old. It's new. <laughs> Our Torah is new every single day. There was no Old Testament, Maya darling. But I'm saying they're a different religion. They are a different religion. And nowhere does it say that it was an apple. One opinion was it was an etrog, an apple. We'll get to Shavuot. We'll see of why etrog is going to represent Shavuot. But one opinion was it's wheat. That first fruit, actually, that's when mankind started to eat grain. And wheat represents the initial grain they started to eat uh, in Gan Eden. It doesn't mean from a tree. It just means the fruit. Because uh, one of the Sheva Minim, one species is called a fruit, is actually called wheat. It's not fruit as, as you know it, of a tree, but it's actually a... It came from an etz, so it's saying this, this plantation that was there included, included wheat. Yeah. Maybe the gluten free kids are just, you know, like a sign that not all of us are If it was wheat, maybe it's not all of us are sinners. Maybe we're really like... We're not all sinners, we're good people. <laughs> nice try. Okay! Yeah? Okay, because a thousand years... After this event, something happened during that period between Pesach and Shavuot that was really bad. And what that was, we're going to see. Rabbi Akiva. So a, as why, that's why a layer was added of mourning. But the day, it doesn't change the time. The time is good. It just adds mourning on top of it. But as soon as the morning goes, we go back to the actual, didn't push away the joyous time. Right? It doesn't replace it. It just covers it. But as soon as you remove the morning from it, it goes back to its natural state, and its natural state is a time of, a time of, um, of joy. Okay, so basically, let's go back. So, what is the barley and this time of second day? So, the second day of Pesach is a time of happiness and celebration. We're enjoying, right? And one of the reasons is we bring these brand new, delicious crops as a gratitude. Which crop was chosen? So, Rab barley. Barley was chosen as that food. So, look at page ninety. And we'll see the Midrash. The Midrash tells us that what this is all about we'll is to show page 90. Are we skipping this story? We mentioned already. It's giving a gift. The Chizkuni says it brings, a, it's a gift to Hashem, a toda, a toda to Hashem for allowing these wonderful fruits to come out of the ground. So Rabbi Yanai says, what aspect of gratitude do we feel when we say the Omer? So it says, basically, you have to realize that a person buys meat from the market, they do all the work, but they cook and prepare it, and uh, everything the good that comes from it. However, HaKadosh Baruch Hu allows all the crops to come out. We don't do anything. It just happens. You put a seed in, or well, the seed falls by itself from other plants, and then Hashem makes sure the wind puts and flies it around, and the water comes, and the wind, and all the nutrients in the soil suck into that thing. So really, we have to show Hakarat uh, HaTov. It's all about, this Omer is all about Hakarat HaTov, which means gratitude. Recognizing the good, sure. Hakarat HaTov. Gratitude. The gratitude to Hashem for giving us beautiful goodness during the season. Remember, Eretz Yisrael always was an agricultural society, it still is, and therefore the rain and all the environment and the water is a blessing. And the water in Israel is a gift from Hashem. There is no Nile, like they had in Egypt, to water everything, right? We had to rely upon the rain. That's why praying for rain is such a major 
part of, uh, of our gratitude to Hashem and requests from Hashem. Okay? So he's like, so basically this is gratitude to Hashem. So you can't pay Hashem. You can pay his representatives, the Kohanim. So when they would bring the Omer, the Kohen would bring the Omer in the Beit HaMikdash, it was gratitude. It was as though we're giving a gift to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. And who gets to enjoy the gifts to Hashem, the Maser and the Truma, right? Well, various people, but mostly the Kohanim, some of the Levim as well. Okay, because they are God's representatives. Okay, so it's all basically, it's all basically gratitude to Hashem. Why? Because a person could make a mistake. And this is a very famous expression you'll see written a number of times. That kochiv osam yadi, that we are the reasons for our success. We are the reasons for our success. And we the Jewish people do not like that. We are not the reason for our success. Hashem is the reason for our success. Whether it's in business, growing crops, Hashem decides what comes out the ground, what does not. How much money we make, how much money we don't make, Lalenu. It's all min hashamayim. It's all from Hashem. We recognize that by giving tzedakah. Okay? This is really a form of... By the way, this is the real tzedakah. Most of us don't own land, so we do ma'aser kesafim, ma'aser of money. But traditionally, it was actually a piece of your crops were given to poor people, given to the Kohanim, right? The first part of your crops. This is what everyone used to do. Okay, it's just basically a thank you to Hashem that everything's going well. Why this time of year? Because that's when all the crops are coming out. Gratitude to Hashem is a major part of, and I mean, it's not coincidence at this time because if we hadn't got out of Egypt, we would never got to Sinai, we would never got to Eretz Yisrael, and we'd have nothing to plant anyway. So it's all about gratitude. As my kids always say, gratitude is the attitude. Okay? Gratitude is the attitude. You got it? Okay. So that's the Omer. So let's just recap very quickly. So what is the Omer? It's an amount. Of what? Of barley. Why barley? Because barley ripens the quickest. So as soon as your prophets come in, thank you Hashem. Who to who? When? That time of year. Okay. There's, and also barley is an animal food. We go from animal to human. We leave Mitzrayim, we're like animals as it were. And at Har Sinai, we became mentioned, we became humans. In addition to that being the Omer, the Omer is also a period of time. So when you said that at the beginning, you were correct. The Omer is also a period of time. A period of time that begins on the second night and day of Pesach. What's that about? So that's actually a different mitzvah. It's a different mitzvah, and it's more connected to this journey from Har Sinai, from Mitzrayim to Har Sinai. I'm not even drunk. From Mitzrayim, Pesach, to, to Har Sinai. Now, we're going to see something very unusual. We don't count the first night in Eretz Yisrael or in Chosla Aretz because the Tumim Mitzvot. We're also not going to count. That's for one reason. The reason we don't count, write this down. The reason we don't start the count on night one is because there's too many Mitzvot that we're already involved in. We don't want to add the whole counting Omer thing over here. We don't want to be marbes, simcha, We don't want to mix joy with joy. The Omer is joy. Pesach Seder is joy. Shem's like, take it easy. Loosen up. Right? Put it on separate days. We're also not going to count on Shavuot. We're not going to count on Shavuot either. Why? Because Shavuot is actually the 50th. So we're going to count the intermediate days, watch carefully. I need you to think about this for a minute. Guys, please listen. There are intermediate days of 49 days, not including the night side of Pesach, which is when the miracle happened, right? Not including Shavuot when the Torah was given on the 50th. You're left with 49 days in between. Are you with me? You're going to count all those 49. What does that sound like? 49 is 7 times Seven. That's actually just like you go from Sukkot to Shemini Atzeret. It's seven with an extra day. We'll see next semester. When we talk about Sukkot to Shemini Atzeret. So too, just like there are seven intermediate, we've got seven days as well from seven times seven 
Kefel from Pesach to Shavuot. You count the 49. You don't count on Shavuot itself. And when we get to Shavuot, it's going to follow the Omer, because we're following the pattern over here in our course. You can see that Shavuot is going to be... I'm just going to tell you this. We'll have to investigate it. It's beyond time. You can only count in time, because you're counting days. Shavuot is above Zman, above time. So you're not going to count. I'm going to explain when we get to Shavuot, you'll see a lot more why that is. Actually, Shavuot is going to actually be above space as well, above time and space, which is why Shavuot, the word Shavuot actually means weeks. What a strange name for a Jewish holiday. I know a Pesach is called Pesach because we pass, Hashem passed over the houses of the Jewish people to get the Mitzrayim, the firstborn Mitzrayim. Why would the holiday that represents giving the Torah be called weeks? It's a reference to these seven weeks in between Pesach and Shavuot. It's all about the preparation. So we are preparing ourselves on these 49 days, which is seven times seven for the 50th day, which is Shavuot. Are you following this? So I know I'm throwing in Shavuot a little bit early over here because we just finished Pesach and we're beginning the Omer. But this 49 days, according to this, is all preparation for the Shavuot celebration. A lot of confused faces here. Okay, we're going to repeat all this soon. Yeah, go. So we, because we have a lot of mitzvah already, we don't count the first day? As part of the Omer. And we don't count on Shavuot itself because Shavuot is beyond counting. So the 49 days you're going, and why you're counting, we have to go see. We haven't seen anything to tell us why we're counting. I'm going to in a second. You're only going to count the intermediate days of this period. It's like, watch this, watch carefully. Pesach is Chag, Shavuot is Chag. Those 49 days are Chol HaMoed. It's a 49-day Chol HaMoed, intermediate days of the holiday. Pesach and Shavuot go together. You can't receive Torah unless you're free. And the whole reason we're free is in order to receive the Torah. So, really, you can't celebrate. I know many people, will, many people will celebrate Pesach and they don't keep Shavuot. That's ridiculous. That's like going free and like, what do I do now? I'll just stand here, you know, outside the jail. No, it doesn't work. You've got to go. You've got to do something to your freedom. So you went free in order to receive the Torah. So Pesach and Shavuot go together. They go hand in hand. The two of the Shalosh Raglim, two of the foot festivals. But the days in between are really important because that's how they connect. It's like bookends. It's like um, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. We're going to see next semester those two go together. You're just going to need 10 days in order to prepare. Why 10? We'll see why 10 is the number that connects Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So 10 is going to represent that. This is represented by the number 49. Okay? So what's the 7 times 7? It's 49. Ah, very good. So what does seven represent? Okay, so seven, very good, is going to represent this world, Olam Hazeh. Seven represents Olam Hazeh. That's why there are seven days of the week. You count seven, day one, two, three, five, six, and then you go back to one again. Seven is seven um, colors of the rainbow, the rabbis tell us. Seven notes in the musical scale, right? It's da, 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 and it goes back again. There is no eighth. Something when Mashiach comes, there will be an eighth note, by the way. There will be an eighth. Seven represents Olam Hazem. So seven times seven is a doubling up of that. And then eight represents, like Shemini Atzeret, which is the, not the eighth day of Sukkot, it's the day after Sukkot, actually. It's its own holiday we're going to see. It represents like the 50th. So the 50th day of the Omer is like the day after seven times seven. So we prepare ourselves in this world in order to go to Olam Abba, which is Har Sinai. Emma, you got that? It's like a 7 times 7 equals 49, and then you don't count the 50th because Shavuot is beyond this world. It's Lamala Minateva, as we're going to see. Okay. So 7 represents Olam Hazeh, 8 represents Olam Haba. In this case, the 50th. 7 times 7 plus 1, just like 7 plus 1 gets to 8, 49 plus 1 gets to 50. Does that make sense, guys? Are you following me, holy sisters? Awesome. How do we know we count? 
Where do we know we count the Omer? So let's finish with this. Look at page 90 at the bottom. This is from Vayikra. And we'll see the Pasukim that tell us there is a mitzvah to count. Usfartem. You're going to count. Mi Machrata Shabbat. From the... Sound familiar, right? Machrata Shabbat is a reference to the day after Pesach, meaning the day after the first day of Pesach, which was Seder night. Miyom, from the day. Haviechem et Omer HaTunufa, that you're going to bring this Omer of waving, this amount of barley that's for waving. Sheva Shabbatot. Seven, now what is Shabbatot? The word Shabbat means the day, but it also means a week. The word Shabbat also means, so it's seven weeks. To Mimot, they need to be complete. It can't be seven and a bit, or six and a little bit. It's got to be seven shlimut, seven to mimot. That's why you have to wait till night time on the 49th that gets you into 50th to begin Shavuot. But the Torah is telling us you need seven complete weeks. Se- Sheva, Shabbatot, to mimot means whole, complete. Tiana, it should be. So now we know from the second day of Pesach, you're going to count. And remember, you can start counting the night before, because the night before is part of the day, right? Because our day begins at night. So for us, in Choslaris, that means the second Seder night, you're going to count. And you can count seven whole weeks. And you're going to count those. The night after that, the Gin Shavuot, which celebrates, we're going to see, Matan Torah. There's no number on Shavuot. Got it? Ad mi macharata Shabbat hashvim until the seventh week tisbru chamishim yom. You got fifty days. Vekraftem mincha. Then you're going to bring a mincha chadashal Hashem, a new korban to Hashem. What that korban is, why it's brought then, what it looked like, what it tasted like, we're going to see. But you're going to have to wait forty nine days in order to get that food. We're going to stop over there. We did a lot today. Woo! Baruch Hashem. Have a great successful day, peeps.